Well, good morning and welcome to today's Devo. Hey, honestly, do you ever look at other people and wonder, why do they get the miracle, right? Why do they get good answers to their prayers? Like, why do they get healed? Why is their marriage okay? Why are their kids the honor students? Why do their dreams come true? When maybe you feel like my own life seems to be going from bad to worse. Well, you know what? I bet Paul must have been tempted to feel the exact same way here in Acts chapter 23. I mean, first there's the riot and then the arrest and then things really get bad. A band of over 40 assassins <laughs> what? vows not to eat or drink until they have murdered him. Who has this happened to them? A band of 40 assassins takes a vow to kill him. Now think of this. Previously in Acts, God miraculously freed Peter miraculously freed uh, John and Paul and Silas and Peter previous to this on their, their very first night of various imprisonments. Do you remember all those stories? Chains fell off, angels opened doors, earthquakes shook shackles loose, but apparently not this time. In fact, spoiler alert, Paul remains in chains for the rest of the book of Acts. There is no miraculous release for the rest of Acts. So what do you do when you don't get the miracle? You know, when other people are delivered from unemployment or, or cancer or loneliness or uh, depression, while those same doors seem to remain locked for you. And, and because those other folks have experienced genuine deliverance, they'll try to encourage you with their stories when really it just kind of hurts to hear them. Listen, sometimes God delivers his saints from their prisons. And sometimes he doesn't. God answers prayer differently for different people at different times in their lives. Yet, here's a big lesson from the book of Acts. Miraculous deliverance or continued trial, God works through both equally well in the book of Acts and also in your life. I mean, Paul's extended stay in Caesarea that he was facing here must have seemed just like red tape purgatory but God eventually uses it in amazing ways. He gets to share his faith before kings. He's brought to Rome, all expenses paid by Caesar himself. So before we go today, just listen again to what Jesus says to Paul in that vision that we looked at yesterday in Acts 23, 11. He says, first, take courage. Take courage. Courage is a choice. It is possible to take it. Jesus is saying, here, take it. Take courage. Don't be afraid. It's possible to decide to focus your mind on faith and not fear. Otherwise, Jesus would not have asked this of Paul. If, if it was impossible to take courage when you were bummed, Jesus wouldn't have asked him to because God is not going to ask you to do the impossible. It is possible for you now today to take courage. And then Jesus says, as you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify in Rome. God still had a purpose for him. And similarly, you may feel like your best years are behind you. You may feel like you're stuck in a holding pattern, but Jesus still has a purpose for you. If you're breathing, that means there is future ministry. Keep your eyes open. Keep your spirit ready for it. Now, maybe the most encouraging thing about the vision was the fact that Jesus was right there with him. And he is right there with you. Just because times might be bad does not mean he's abandoned you. Listen, I hope you come to the weekend services uh, tomorrow or Sunday for some more encouragement straight from the Bible about what Paul faces next, which is a very scary shipwreck. But in the meantime, here's a prayer for the journey. Say something like this, Father God, help me to believe that whether I receive a miraculous deliverance, which I totally have faith that you can bring me or not, you are still at work in my circumstances and you still have a purpose for me, no matter what circumstances I am facing today. Amen. God bless you, and I hope I see you this weekend.